Houston, we're, we're doing about somewhere between 15 and 25 percent of our pre-COVID levels of business. So um, we've obviously cut our costs. We've put off a lot of people, stood down a lot of people. Uh, the same as most people in our industry. It's fairly uh, grim then because you do rely a lot uh, on people travelling overseas. Uh, indeed, uh, not so much interstate, I, I might suggest. But JobKeeper um, has allowed you, no doubt, to keep on hundreds of staff. But are you saying you'd have to, you've had to sack some anyway, even though you have had JobKeeper? Yeah, we've, we've gone... Uh, globally, we've gone from 22,000 people to about... Uh, uh, about 7,000 in Australia from 11 to about three and a half to 4,000. So, um, and um, about half of the, those gone are on stand down and half of them um, have been made redundant. So, you know, it's a pretty sad state of affairs. Um, uh, but, um, you know, I think for the travel and tourism industry, as, as with airline airports, it, it is about survival now. Mm. Without JobKeeper, how many more of those people would have been sacked? Look, um, significant numbers would have had to be made redundant uh, more. And uh, if the job keeper or way support ends, uh, that's something we have to we'll have to look at again um, at the end of March. But uh, it's it's one of the uh, one of the things we will be looking at. We're reasonably confident there will be some sort of support, but we don't know what it'll be at the moment. And job, uh, job keeper is going to end at the end of March. We we know that, but. So what are you planning for? Are you planning, uh, again, we don't know, it could be grants, it could be hex-style loans. Depending on that, I mean, what, what kind of reality are you looking at? Look, um, we, we're lucky. We're, we're a large public company. We're in 23 countries. Every country is different. Mm. So we've got uh, two or three years of cash to survive, even if uh, time, you know, this, this uh, pandemic continues to have a big negative effect so we're okay it'll be the generally it'll really affect negatively the small businesses in, in travel and tourism but uh, um, we we would just in australia it'd make a big difference if the domestic borders were open and, and stayed open that's that's very important to us and other operators i know well mr turner give us an idea when there are border closures like that what kind of backlash, if you like, do you see at your level? Are you seeing people just cancel holidays altogether and then not rebooking? And, and is that what's affecting your business? Yeah, partly. I mean, if you remember before Christmas, when the borders were open, uh, there was a huge surge of travel here, here domestically. But then people got trapped. Uh, people from Victoria got trapped in New South Wales. Yeah. And it makes people very wary of, of booking a holiday, let alone um, obviously cancelling what they have to cancel. So it, that's one of the major issues. Yeah. Are the fundamentals of your business generally good? I mean, pre-COVID, uh, did you have a long-term plan of survival, obviously? And, you know, can you bounce back when those international borders and if the domestic borders stay open? We're in a pretty good position and, and I mean we're obviously taking advantage of these times. We're down a lot um, to try to keep some of the costs out of our business and also to improve our productivity through uh, technology and other areas. So, um, you know, there's, there's not many positive things to say about this in travel and tourism, but, but there are a few for, for us. Will you be asking some of your employees to be taking a pay cut? No, we won't, uh, as far as I know at the moment. The, the main, main issue at the moment is um, getting people back to full-time work. The, you know, we still have quite a few people on uh, three or four days a week rather than five days a week. So that'll be one of our priorities to, uh, to do that rather than... And, and I suppose you could argue that is a pay cut, but, um, and, it, and it does depend on JobKeeper, what happens after JobKeeper, if anything. So we just haven't... Um, yeah, we're starting to model uh, that scenario now. All right, so just to be very clear, once JobKeeper ends, you'll have to look at the, the situation. Are, are you ruling out uh, pay cuts or, or not quite at this stage because you need to see what's on the other side? No, look, we, we have an enterprise agreement, um, so pay cuts won't be 
in order. It, it, it will be getting people back to full time. It will be a big challenge for us. OK, let's talk about what government assistance might be on the other side. It doesn't seem clear, but has the government spoken with you, any representatives, about what might be on the offering? Are we talking grants? Are we talking about, you know, hex-style loans? No, um, you know, I've heard about the hex-style loans, um, uh, and, and, and that could be a really positive thing for us. Um, but it, for, for individual people... Um, some sort of wage support, I think, is important. The industry, including us, has put quite a few um, fairly um, similar proposals to the government, uh, which they are considering. Um, I know there is some... Um, you know, the Treasurer is, is, is not particularly supportive at the moment, as far as we know, but um, quite a few of the ministers are. So um, we're, we just don't know what's going to happen in that way support area. OK, and just finally on this vaccine passport, this stamp, you'd welcome that, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's very important. I mean, um, you know, the reality, I think, is Australia's going to have to live with the virus. It's going to be amongst us. And as long as vulnerable people and old people can be vaccinated, the va vaccines, it's generally seems to be good news. You know, it's preventing transmission and uh, serious illness. So... Uh, Having a passport to show you've been vaccinated, you'll probably need that to travel, particularly international. So, so it's positive news. Just finally, Mr Turner, what is the best case scenario? What are you telling your investors about getting back to business as usual? Look, we're pretty confident that... Um, and obviously it depends a lot on what happens over the next uh, 9 or 12 months. But we're pretty confident towards the end of this year we'll be back to a, a break-even point of uh, a break even in business and that's that's globally but uh, you know and that's largely the impact of vaccines starting to have an impact but uh, there's still a lot of water to flow under the bridge of course